Welcome to the Demogorgon Pounce Guide. In this video, I will try and teach you how to use the Demogorgon's Pounce to its full effect. I will be covering the Demogorgon's stats in detail regarding its Pounce, as well as teaching you how to use the Pounce in specific and general loops. To start off with, the Demogorgon has a Pounce speed of 18.6 meters per second, or 460% which is twice the speed of Hillbilly's Chainsaw, which is 9.3 meters per second or 230%. Because the pounce is so extremely fast, it means that it's almost impossible to react to, given there's no tail. To illustrate this, here is a clip of a survivor trying to react to the pounce. I will explain why this specific pounce works so well. So first off, I was hiding my red stain behind a wall, and the sound cue for Demogorgon's ability of the Abyss is delayed compared to some other killers. Just to give an example, here is a Huntress and a Demogorgon for comparison. As you can see, the sound cue for the Huntress starts as soon as he charges her ability, whereas the Demogorgon's sound cue is at the end of the ability. This means that when the survivor hears the ability, then it's already fully charged. You can see that the survivor knocks the pallet in advance expecting a mind game from the side of the wall, which is perfectly sensible, which is a perfectly sensible thing to do. The side of this wall is very safe to camp for survivors, as you can easily see the killer coming. The problem is that with a fully charged pounce, the Demogorgon is way too fast to react to. The reason why survivors can normally dodge it is not because of reaction time, but because they preemptively dodge it. If you take away the vision and the sound, they have nothing to go on and will have to guess what you would do instead. This is very similar to how the spirit works as well. Because of this, it's important that you manipulate the red stain in chases and have a basic understanding of looping. You will also have to preemptively pounce sometimes to make it work, as you won't make it with a pounce otherwise. Even if you pounce and miss, your recovery cooldown is 2.367 seconds and the cooldown can be reduced all the way down to 1.75 seconds with both add-ons, which is almost nothing. For this kind of aggressive playstyle, I also recommend running Enduring because you'll be face planting a lot of pallets, and should you get stunned, your cooldown will be almost zero, which means you have max pressure in chases. You can also combo this with Spirit Fury to get a free down. Demogorgon's Pounce takes only 1 second to fully charge, and requires a minimum of 0.65 seconds to pounce. You have to do short pounces and chases where the loops are not very long. If you try and fully charge your pounce, the survivor can keep running and you will miss. Another thing you need to be wary of is to only pounce the distance required for you to hit people, unless you want to zone a survivor. If you pounce too far, you might end up hitting an object which gives you a cooldown of 2.3 seconds. This cooldown is unaffected by any add-ons you might use. Before going into any further anti-looping strategies, I'm going to cover the limitations of the pounce. The Demogorgon can pounce up to 11 meters with a fully charged pounce. The hit of a pounce gives you a cooldown of 3 seconds compared to the regular lunge which has a cooldown of 3.2 seconds. The pounce doesn't work with the following perks. Know it. Devour Hope. Make your choice. Rancor. Iron Maiden. Hex the Third Seal. Fragment's Demise. Unrelenting. Remember Me. Mangled. Surge. And Save the Best for Last. If you happen to use a one-shot perk like Devour or Know It, using the perk will still reveal that you have it without using the effect. Because Save the Best for Last doesn't work, it means you can hit the obsession with your pounce and not lose any stacks. This is another perk I would recommend running, not only for the stacks, but if you hit a survivor with 6 to 8 stacks, and they happen to path wrong, you can sometimes pounce them straight after. As for the actual hit range of the pounce, then it's actually shorter than the normal lunge. The combine is a perfect example for this. However, the width of the lunge is slightly wider than that of a normal lunge, as demonstrated on the clip here. 
The pounce can hit survivors if you pounce from an elevation. And your charge animation will also end if you drop from a hill. The pounce can hit from an elevation even if the survivor is vaulting a window. Instead, the Demogorgon will just get body blocked or stuck in the window. However, there is an exception to this rule. If you pounce from an elevation and there is a slope or a path, you can actually hit the survivor. This is for instance hills, the combine or stairs. Using the pounce, you can break a pallet in 2 seconds, while breaking a standard pallet takes 2.6 seconds. However, you also have to charge the ability for a minimum of 0.65 seconds. But in most cases in chases this will be more than worth it. In order to break a pallet or hit a survivor at the middle of the pallet, you need to have at least an angle of about 30 degrees. If you hit a pallet while the survivor vaults into you, then it will destroy the pallet and not damage the survivor. It's also impossible to curve the pounce as of currently. When looping survivors in general loops, make sure that you always chase them on the long side of the pallet. That way you can contest the pallet and the survivor as well. If you chase the survivor on the short side of the pallet, then you will have pressure on the pallet before you ride next to it almost. When chasing survivors in open and medium loops, try and play around with their reaction time by steering backwards and forwards while moonwalking. If the survivor has a slow or inadequate reaction time, it will be enough for Dimworld to land a short pounce on the survivor. Again, try and make sure you do it so the survivor will be running on the long side of the pallet. Once the pallet has been dropped, you can force the survivor to vault the pallet by charging the pounce, then quickly walk to the side and pounce as they vault the pallet again. Generally speaking, the shorter the loop, the higher chance of success. You can also apply this when survivors are vaulting windows. Against more experienced survivors, you might want to try and fake the pounce to the side of the window. You want to do this by charging and moving earlier than you would normally do. You want to signal to the survivor that you're going to pounce once they vault the window. That way they will fake it and you can pounce on them straight away. When dealing with general loops, you can also fake trying to charge your pounce, so the survivor will keep running. Then you can keep chasing them and land a pounce or an M1 on them. You can zone survivors by holding your charge when they're about to approach pallets or windows. In terms of pallets, you need to hold your charge down until they reach the pallet. If they keep trying to dodge you without going for the pallet, then you can cancel your pounce and M1 them. If they keep running, don't pounce until they are straight onto the pallet. That way you are a lot more light to hit them or at least get a pallet in exchange. Dealing with windows is almost the same, except that you don't pounce until you see them actually vault the window. Demogorgon has a 460% movement speed, which means you don't have to pounce ahead of time, as long as you can see them. It's a waiting and patience game, most of the time. And in most cases, when survivors approach windows, you should be able to either land or hit or force them to dodge so much you can M1 them. If you get baited, then that's pretty much on you, because you reacted too soon. The pounds can also be used to bait out dead heart. If you believe a survivor has dead heart, simply hold the charge down and wait for them to dead heart. Then pounce straight after they have used the part. Because dead heart is in a straight line, it means the survivor can only dodge in one direction and it makes them extremely predictable. The best way to use Dead Heart against Demogorgon is to Dead Heart straight into him, and that is for two reasons. First off, Demogorgon can't stop his pounds once committed, which means the survivor will get additional distance on the Demogorgon. On top of that, the Demogorgon can't turn properly around after a pounce, which means it's possible for Demogorgon to lose the survivor. On the topic of weaknesses, when the Demogorgon hits the survivor, then his movement is even more restricted and thus it's possible to blind the Demogorgon without the Demogorgon being able to do much in return. So bring Lightborn if you expect survivors to abuse this weakness. The pounce can also be used against Sprint Burst to some effect. As long as the survivor's path wrong, like running to the side or starts the Sprint Burst too late. I talked before about how it's important to hide your intentions as Demogorgon. This is not only true for loops, but also in the open. You can charge your ability up behind objects like trees or hills for instance, 
and then pounce as you come back into vision again. It's now time for the specific loops. If you have understood the basics, then you will be able to learn the specific loops quite easily. First off, I need to talk about the perk I'm all ears, as it is a much recommended perk for getting the most out of the pounce. Essentially, whenever a survivor performs a fast action, you can see the order for 6 seconds with a 40 seconds cooldown. Because the Demogorgon's long and fast pounce with a delayed sound cue, it means you can either hit them by knowing where they'll be ahead of time, or at least make a significant gap closure. First up is the Shack, the Long Wall and the TNL Walls. These are the easiest loop for Demogorgon to deal with at the moment. Next up is slightly more difficult loops. These are the different variations of the Jungle Gym and the Tractor. I can't cover all the loops, so I have chosen the ones that I find the most relevant and have the most footage of currently. More anti-loop guides for specific loops will come later once I have mastered them too. The Shack is one of Demogorgon's most favorite loops because of the long walls. Whenever a survivor turns around one of the long sides, you can hide your red stain, charge your ability and then pounce as you come straight back into vision. The pallet and the window in the shack are also very close to each other, which means you can pressure them both at the same time. Just make sure to only pounce the survivor once they are vaulting the window, or are almost though under the pallet. You can pounce the survivors once they have vaulted the window on the short side of the shack. Should you miss, then it's not a big deal, cause with cooldown add-ons you can pounce them before they can reach the window or pallet again. With them all ears, you can play around with the survivors by waiting a little bit until they have mispositioned themselves. Most survivors don't want to abandon the shack. Your pounce is almost the length of the shack. Even if you don't hit them, you'll be straight on them and should be able to follow up with another pounce or an M1. The long wall is a loop where the Dim Gordon can perform well. If the survivor gives up the pallet as you chase them, then you can manipulate the red stain and pounce in the opposite direction of where you intend to go. In order for the survivor to get a good view, they have to pick a side to stand at. If you have distance on the survivor, then hide your red stain and pounce on them from behind the wall. If you approach the loop from the short side of the wall, then a good option is to charge your pounce on the long side of the wall. Survivors don't like to cap the pallet from this direction. So a lot of the time, they think you're going to lunge and mind game this side of the wall. If you approach from the long side of the wall, then it's pretty much the same as explained before. This side of the wall is your safest bet to pounce, since survivors expect a mind game from this side. Again, some survivors also like to fake and abandon the loop, and if they do, then it's often this side as well. If you approach from the short side and the pallet is knocked down, Walk back into the little gap in the wall and wait for like one second. Then emerge back out with a charged ability and pounce the survivor. If you approach from the long side on the wall and you have the distance, then you can force the survivor to vault the pallet and then pounce him on the other side as he comes across. Obviously, these tricks don't always work. So just to showcase, here's a small scenario where it took two pounces to get the survivor. The L and T walls are also a favorite loop for Demogorgon. To explain why, I first have to showcase the optimal loop path for the survivors in this loop. Survivors want to chain the windows between the two windows like this. Normally as a killer, you must force the survivor to loop in the opposite direction by changing loop direction. However, with the Demogorgon, you can choose the other side of the loop and you'll be fine. When the survivor approaches the window, simply charge your ability and pounce them as they vault the window. If you approach from the side, then you can pounce the survivor after they have vaulted the window. Another thing you can do is wait a little bit once the survivor has come out of vision, then charge your ability and pre-pounce at the side you pretended to abandon. This is not very reliable, but it can throw survivors off sometimes, simply because if the survivors position themselves properly, this shouldn't happen. When the survivor turns the short side of the wall, I would recommend that you lunge rather than pounce if the wall is either medium or small in length. Simply because the distance is too short and the lunge hit is longer than that of the pounce. 
The jungle gym is a loop where the Demogorgon has both weaknesses and strengths. In terms of strengths, then the Demogorgon can pounce from both sides. This side has a 30 degree angle at least, which means you can hit the survivor if they're under the pallet or destroy it. You can also try and pounce from the other direction, which is less likely to hit the survivor because of the angle, but it is more unexpected. If the survivor chooses to walk the window from this angle, then you can wait a little bit and then pounce them afterwards. It's not super likely to succeed, but the moment you disappear, the survivor either has to wait around here to cover the angles or abandon the loop. The problem with this version of the jungle gym is that the survivor has a lot of options to choose from. Just to show, here is a small scenario. As you can see, when the survivor turns the corner, they can either A, go for the window, or B, go for the pallet. Unlike the shack, you can have pressure on both of them at the same time. Which means, if you just put pressure on the window, then the survivor can keep running. And if you don't, they will get the window for free. If you come from the other side, then you can pounce the survivor as they walk the window. Although, I would recommend just skimming on the window for free, and then get them on the long side with the pallet. You can also pounce the survivor if they come from this direction and they walk the window. The other version of the jungle gym shares similarities with a few exceptions. If the survivor vaults into the jungle gym, then you can pounce them from this side because of the angle. When chasing survivors on this jungle gym, then it's fine to loop towards the window as you can just pounce them if they vault the window and you will also in some cases have pressure on the pallet at the same time. Should they get there before you, then you can go on this side and wait a little bit then pounce if they come back. The tractor is a loop that in theory shouldn't really work, because survivors shouldn't get baited so easily. However, in practicality, it works a lot of the time. All you have to do is bait the survivor to walk the window by fake walking up the stairs, and then start charging your pals as you're about to turn the corner. If done correctly, you should be able to just hit the survivor. Hey guys, uh, I really hope you enjoyed watching this Demogorgon Pounce Guide. It took a lot of time to make, it was really fun. Uh, I will try and get a few videos out of actual Demogorgon play, where I showcase these scenarios and all these kind of tricks in an actual match because that's way more relevant than just showcasing a single eclipse. So yeah, enjoy yourself and have a great time.